So last time we discussed about temperature measurement and temperature measuring devices. So we talked about, we made mention of several devices that we can use to measure temperature, which include thermistor, thermocouple, bimetallic strip, and so on. And then we discussed the operating principle of the thermocouple. Is that also? Yes. We made mention that thermocouple is constructed with two dissimilar metals, two different metals, two wires but of different material, maybe one copper or constantan. Then they are joined together at a point. Joined together, it's not that they it just uh, use gum to, to gum them together. No, they are electrically connected together, whether by welding, you know, bonding them together, screwing them together, or twisting them together at a point. That junction is called the sensing junction. It's called what? Sensing, sensing junction. And that is where it is sensed the temperature you are going to measure. Then we have a control junction, a temperature control junction, where we have a reference temperature. So whenever there is a difference between the sensing junction and the control junction in temperature, temperature difference between the two, then what happens is that EMF will be liberated at the two ends of the wires. So the heat energy, the variable, will be converted to electrical energy. And that is why we said thermocouple is basically a transducer. You remember that? Why do you say it's a transducer? Because it's converting energy from one form to the other. Converting thermal energy, heat, into electrical energy. Now, the measuring system is such that the EMF vibrator can be used to pass through a circuit whereby we use a microammeter to detect the current. And so the micrometer will read the current out. But that meter is not calibrated to measure current. Rather, it is calibrated to measure what? Temperature. Why? Why can we do that? We can do that because there is a proportionality between the changes in temperature and changes in current. So even though it is not completely proportional, it's not totally proportional, but there is a reasonable level of proportionality. And then remember that the EMF, the EMF measured, is given like this. The relationship between the EMF, then the material used, and the temperature can be expressed like E equals A delta theta or delta T plus B delta theta squared. You remember this formula? Yes. Sir. Yes. Delta theta is change in temperature. Or sometimes it's okay, we see delta T. That is T1 minus T2. Change, change, change in temperature between the sensing junction and the control or the reference junction. So that is the operating principle of the thermocouple. And that is what we studied, part of what we studied last time. Then I told you there is an example that we can, you know, use to explain this formula, how this formula is, you know, used to calculate the EMF and temperature. If you check the handouts, you got the handout, right? You got the handouts? Not yet, okay. So some of you may, might have uh, the hold notes. You might have the hold notes. So the, the handout, we have a question that I'm going to quickly mention, read out the question to you. Then we look at the solution. The question says, if a thermocouple instrument is made from two metals maintained at zero degree C and 100 degree C respectively, and the thermoelectric constants are 50 microvolts per degree Celsius and 105 microvolts per degree Celsius, determine the EMF produced at the junction of the two metals. So the, the, the values given are zero degree C and 100 degree C. Are you there? Yes, and those are the temperature at the reference point and at the sensing point. You get the point now. So we have temperature, uh, uh, let's say temperature one is equal to zero degree C. Temperature two is equal to what? 100 degree C. All right. So that we can say delta theta equals 100 minus zero. That means what? 100 degree Celsius. Are we there? All right. Then we are giving the thermoelectric constant A and B. A equals uh, 50 microvolts per degree C, per degree C, and B equals 105 microvolts per degree C. Don't forget, A and B, they are constants determined by the type of material used for the metals. If it is copper, if it is aluminum, if it is constantan, or whatever metal is used to make the thermocouple. The constants will be fixed for that particular metal. But the constants are not the same for different metals. Are we together? So we can now use these items, this, 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 in this formula. 
Right now, I want you to work it out. I have the answer here in the notes, but you tell me what your answer is. Work it in your notes, following this formula. Work it out in your notes and tell me what you got. The answer is here, but I'm not going to tell you. So that those who want to see whether you know how to, you know, use um, uh, such a small formula. So let us see people that are doing the work. I'm turning camera to you. All right. I can see people are bearing their head down, working. That small problem. That's what we want. Let everybody work it and tell us the answer. Work it and tell us the answer. Okay. The, la the class is getting bigger and bigger, getting larger. Is that also? All right. So who has finished? Oh, you don't have calculator. Bring out your calculator and do it. What was the answer? You said? 15.5 millivolts. Wrong. 1.055 what? Huh? If you are able to get 1.055, you are right. That's the correct answer. This is what we are saying. E equals 15 times 10 is 1 minus 6 times 100. Plus 105 times 10 to the minus 6, don't forget it's microvolts, times 100 squared. So if you punch on that place up, you'll get 1.055 volts. Volts. That is the correct answer. You do it carefully. So that's the first example. Now, the only thing is that when we are testing you, we might not give you direct question like this. We might give you other parameters and ask you to. I give you the EMF, for instance, ask you to calculate the change in temperature, for instance. In that case, you are going to form a quadratic equation, isn't it? Yes. Because this is quadratic. The transistor has squared. So if you give you other parameters and say, determine the change in temperature, you use your small mathematical knowledge and play around it and get the values out. If you check the past questions, you will see something like that. If you check the past questions, you will see something like that. So once again, watch the video, you know, like and share the videos, and then make comments, make comments, ask questions over there so that I can respond.